following program is produced by the Living Church of God. And greetings, friends, around the world. Who or what is the Antichrist? As the end of this age approaches, you need to know the answer to this vital question, for the final personification of the Antichrist will probably appear within the next several years of your life. But unless you know the nature of the Antichrist, you, yes, you, will probably be deceived. I will now reveal to you the clear proof as to who and what the Antichrist actually is. Stay tuned. Tomorrow's World The Living Church of God presents Dr. Roderick C. Meredith Richard Ames Bringing you the good news of your future in tomorrow's world. This week, Dr. Roderick C. Meredith explores the question, who is the Antichrist? And now, Dr. Roderick C. Meredith. Horrifying events are beginning to occur in our Western Christian professing society. The September 11, 2001 destruction of the Twin Towers in New York was just the beginning, as you will soon see. God, my friends, is at least allowing the forces of evil to seriously threaten our American and Canadian way of life. Why? Is the Antichrist involved in any of this? The surprising answer is yes. If you understand what the Antichrist actually is, in Psalm 111, verse 10, the inspired Word of God tells us, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do His commandments. His praise endures forever. Yes, God gives an understanding to those who keep His commandments to do the Ten Commandments as a way of life, to follow what God says. He gives them understanding. But, of course, you need biblical proof of this. You need proof on the subject of the Antichrist. So now open your Bible and open your mind. I'm going to show you things you've probably never understood before. Let's study together what the inspired Word of God actually says about the Antichrist. And don't assume that you know the answer. There are all kinds of answers out there. Don't assume that you know the answer until we have completed this entire program. I want to give you things, as I say, that most men do not understand at all. Most professing Christian ministers do not understand at all. Revelation 12, verse 9, Satan has deceived the whole world. It is interesting to note that the Antichrist is used only in the letters of 1st and 2nd John, those little letters near the end of the New Testament, 1st John 2 and verse 18. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. Yes, many, many false ministers took over the name of Christianity, but they left the Apostle John and the true apostles and began to start their own religions, their own ideas, and call them Christianity. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be manifest that none of them were of the truth. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I've not written you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? Jesus, the human Jesus, is the anointed one, the Messiah who was to come, he's saying. He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Now, my friend, that is one application one understanding, a partial understanding of the Antichrist. He reveals part of the truth here. He who denies that Jesus, in fact, was the Messiah. That is Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. The beginning of what, my friends? Genesis? Genesis in the Bible doesn't tell us a lot about the New Testament truth of God. It just gives you the history of the creation of the world and humanity. He is talking here, obviously, as most Bible commentaries understand and agree, about the beginning of Christianity, about Jesus Christ, and about the apostles, and what they taught at the beginning. So he said, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. 
If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you will also abide in the Son and in the Father. That is the key. Antichrist gets away from what we have been taught from the beginning by Jesus Christ. And I'm going to cover what I mean by that and what John meant by that as we go through this program very, very carefully. So again, notice that there are many Antichrists. Notice also that we must abide in the truth from the beginning. And that's an important concept. Picture the big churches, the cathedrals, my friends, of mainstream Christianity. Think of all the elaborate rituals and the chants and the memorized prayers and all the goings-on in these great big fancy churches and cathedrals. Is this the Christianity which Jesus of Nazareth taught in the beginning? Let's turn to 1 John now, chapter 3 this time, beginning in verse 21. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. And whatever we ask, we receive from Him. You see, we get the answer to our prayers because we keep His commandments, not some new commandments of Jesus. He's talking about God. Get it in contact. God the Father. We keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. And this is the commandment that we should believe on the name, that is the authority. doesn't mean just the name Jesus or Jesus Christo as it is in Spanish or other languages have different ways of pronouncing it. He's talking about the real character, the nature, the name. The name stands for everything a man stands for, his character, his personality, what he believes, his reputation. We believe on the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave his commandment. Now, he who keeps his commandments going back to the 10, abides in Him. You abide in God if you keep His commandments. And He in Him. And by this we know that He abides in us. God abides in us. He lives in us by the Spirit whom He's given us. He gives us the Holy Spirit. If we surrender and repent and keep His commandments and walk in His way of life. Continuing, chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit... Don't just believe whatever comes along, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets, not a few, not one antichrist, but many antichrists, many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Did he fully come in the flesh? Or was he sort of a disembodied spirit that went in and out of a body, but the real Jesus was not flesh. People have to understand that and really get that. Frankly, most churches do not believe that. That may surprise you, but they don't. When you get right down to it, I'll show you as we go along. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. It was already beginning back then. And you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Yes, someone is in us. Who is that someone? That someone is God and Christ, and they live in us through the Holy Spirit and empower us. They are not in the world. Notice through these passages that God emphasizes obeying the Ten Commandments. And notice the Scripture, how it emphasizes the vital issue of Christ coming in the flesh. After our break, I will explain who will be the ultimate personification of the Antichrist and what all of this really means. What man soon will fulfill this monstrous role in our generation? But now I invite all of you to call or write right away for a free copy of our fully documented booklet, Who or What is the Antichrist? This booklet gives historical information, which I cannot give on this program, my friends. But this booklet on the Antichrist will open your eyes. So call now for your free copy. Just ask for the booklet on the Antichrist. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304, San Diego, California, 92150. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine. 
full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. No cost, no obligation to you. Call today. Now back to our topic, who is the Antichrist? Remember the scriptures tell us that there are many Antichrists, as we have seen. And we've seen that the doctrine of the Antichrist revolves around Jesus Christ coming, quote, in the flesh, end quote. And it also revolves around obedience to God's commandments, as he states over and over in connection with this topic. Now notice why. Turn with me to 2 John, 2 John, verse 4. I rejoice greatly that I found some of your children walking in the truth, he says, as we received commandment from the Father. And now I plead with you, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment to you, but that which you had from the beginning, that we love one another. This is love. And now John explains true love. This is love, that we walk according to his commandments according to God's commandments, he's saying. This is his commandment that as you have heard from the beginning. Again, he uses that term. From the beginning. From the beginning of Christ's ministry. From the beginning of the church of God. As you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. For many antichrists or deceivers, he says here, many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we do not lose those things we work for, but that we receive the full reward, John goes on. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine or the teaching of Christ has both the Father and the Son. And he's kept saying, you've got to believe what you heard in the beginning. And what did Jesus say in the beginning? For well, most of you regular listeners of this program, you viewers, you know we've told you over and over, Matthew 19, 17. The young man came to Christ, said, Good Lord, what can I do to be saved? He said, If you would want eternal life, if you would enter eternal life, keep the commandments. He taught that as a way of life. You've got to go back to the beginning to see what Jesus taught. And notice back in Matthew 24, if you turn there with me, this Olivet Prophecy of the time of the end, Matthew 24, verse 4, Jesus answered and said, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many, not a few, many will come in what name? The name of, uh, you know, some false prophet? Many will come in my name, Jesus said, and will deceive many. They will come in the name of Christ and they will deceive many. That's what we have to understand. We've got to grasp that. People will use the name of Christ and they will use it wrongly. Turn back to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 4. He said, For if he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or you receive a different spirit which you've not received, or a different gospel which you've not accepted, you may well put up with it. He's talking here, the Apostle Paul, about a different Jesus, a different gospel, a different spirit, a whole different approach to God. And that is, in fact, what these teachers teach. They don't teach a way of life based on God's commandments. They talk about an empty faith in the person of Christ. And they do not acknowledge, when you get down to the depth of their real teaching, that Jesus Christ came fully in the flesh and that it was possible, get this, for a fully human being to keep God's commandments in the flesh. Because if they acknowledge that Jesus was fully in the flesh, then they would have to acknowledge that we could keep the commandments of God in the flesh what Jesus tells us to do. But they say, no, the commandments are spiritual and you're carnal and you can't do that. But notice what your Bible says. Turn to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2 now and follow along with this. This is very exciting if you understand what it leads to and what it means. This is Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17. Paul writes, Therefore, in all things, Christ had to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself, Christ, has suffered, he really suffered in the flesh, he was fully human, being tempted. Yes, he was tempted. He is able to aid those who are tempted. He's able to understand us because he himself was tempted. And even more directly and more powerfully, let's turn over to chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15. Paul writes, 
under God's inspiration. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. Our Savior was tempted in all points, like as we are. He was not tempted in a lesser way. He was tempted just like we are. He went through the poles of the flesh because he was fully human. And we need to grasp that fact. And that is denied, frankly, when you understand the niceties of the Catholic and Protestant teachings of the world. And I think most of you realize that if you've been in the world's religions very heavily. But most of you haven't. But they teach that that Christ was not tempted fully like as we are. He was not fully human in that way. And that it is impossible to keep the commandments in the flesh. That is, in effect, what they are teaching. Now, notice Hebrews again, uh, if you would, the book of Hebrews. And we're going to chapter uh, 13 now. Hebrews 13 and verse 8. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if Christ is living his life in you, in your flesh... He will live the same life he did live in his flesh. Because we found back in Matthew 19, 17, in fact, I have it here. I'll turn to it at this point very briefly. If you turn with me back to Matthew 19, Matthew 19, this is what was taught in the beginning. Verse 16, Now behold, one came and said, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And Jesus said, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. And he began to name some of the Ten Commandments. That is what Jesus taught. And we must fully grasp that very, very important fact. Now let's go back again to John. Let's go back to Second John at this point uh, in your Bible. Second John, and remember in verse 7... He says, many deceivers have gone out who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is the deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we do not lose those things that we work for, but that we receive a full reward. We've got to be sure that we hang on to the truth that God gave from the beginning. Notice Galatians 2 and verse 20, which I often give you on this program. I hope you're becoming familiar with this one, folks, because it's my favorite scripture. It's the best one-verse description of Christianity. The Apostle Paul said in Galatians 2 and verse 20, I'm crucified with Christ, and nevertheless I live. I'm still living, yet not I. It wasn't the old Paul. It's not the old person if they're really converted. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live with the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Yes, Christ can and will live his life in you. He will live that same obedient life in you. As he kept the Ten Commandments in his flesh, and he was fully human, he can keep the Ten Commandments in you through the Spirit. You may not keep them perfectly all at once, but you can keep them as a way of life and grow in grace and in knowledge. The doctrine of the Antichrist teaches against that and realize that thousands of false ministers teach this doctrine, the doctrine of Antichrist, which leads to disobedience. They talk about grace, but it becomes cheap grace. And they talk about give your heart to the Lord, just accept Jesus, and that's all there is. No, your Bible says in Acts 2.36 and many other scriptures, Acts 2.38, I guess, is where Peter directly said these words, repent. And be baptized, every one of you. That word they leave out or they minimize or they misunderstand. Repent means you start out by turning around and going the other way. You repent of sin, which is the transgression of God's law, 1 John 3, 4. Then you start keeping the law. And you do it through Christ living his life in you. But, my friends, will there be a final personification of the one and the ones who teach this teaching? Will there be a great man of sin that the Bible indicates is perhaps the Antichrist, although the Bible doesn't use one man as a term, as I've explained. There are many Antichrists. But will the final man of sin, the final Antichrist, arise? Yes, he will. There will be such a man. And notice Second Thessalonians now in your Bible. Second Thessalonians, and turn there with me. This is a very exciting passage. Second Thessalonians, my friends. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1. 
Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to Him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, false letters circulating in Paul's name, as though the day of Christ had come. He says, I'm not saying the day of Christ has already come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away. The word used here in the Greek language is apostasia, a great apostasy, a great falling away from the truth, which happened soon after Paul's death. It began to happen even during his lifetime, as he said, unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. This man of sin will be the final antichrist who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God, he sits as a God-like character in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? I warned you about this, Paul said, and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness. Oh, it's a mystery, like the ancient pagan mysteries, and he uses that term so these people understand a slowly spreading underground mysterious movement that was beginning to twist and pervert things and take over a mystery of lawlessness against God's law is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he's taken away. I think that one who restrained was Paul, frankly, but people argue about that. Then the lawless one will be revealed, the final Antichrist, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. He's going to destroy that ultimate final false prophet. The coming of the lawless one, again lawless, is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and all with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved." This man is going to come with great signs and lying wonders. Notice now chapter 13 of the book of Revelation. Chapter 13, Revelation 13 and beginning in verse 11. The first 10 verses are talked about the beast that was to rise up, the final revival of the Roman Empire. And now he talks about another beast. Then I saw another beast, verse 11, coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. So he looked like Christ, the Lamb, but his message is that of the dragon, Satan, the devil. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast, the Roman Empire, in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs, this final great prophet. Yes, he will. There's never been a man like that in modern times. You know that. This is just ahead of you, my friends, in this world today. He performs great signs so that he makes fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. Will you believe whoever comes along with that kind of a sign? And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs, plural, which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image of the beast who was wounded with the sword and lived. Yes, this Roman Empire is going to be revived and is now being revived in our time today. So we need to understand this is powerful. Notice the final reward of this great false prophet. Back in chapter 19, Revelation 19 and verse 19, I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. And then the beast was captured and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshiped the image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. Yes, the final great pro false prophet who sits in the house of God showing himself that he is God who performs great signs and lying wonders, his followers will finally be cast with him, of course, uh, you know, into destruction. And he himself will be cast into the lake of fire along with the coming dictator over this system that is now being revived in Europe. You need to understand. Again, my friends, be sure to write or call us now and request your free copy of Who or What is the Antichrist? This powerful booklet 
will truly open your eyes. This fully documented booklet will give you historical references and information which I cannot give on this program. Yet this revealing booklet, Who or What is the Antichrist, will be sent absolutely free upon your request. No charge, no follow-up. So call or write immediately. Just ask for the booklet on the Antichrist. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304, San Diego, California, 92150. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine. Full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. No cost, no obligation to you. Call today. Again, my friends, remember that all true Christianity revolves around Galatians 2.20, where Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Christ must live his life in us through the Holy Spirit. Any doctrine that teaches a different way of life, any doctrine that teaches we can't keep the commandments, is a doctrine of the Antichrist. We must understand that. Please understand that. If you truly surrender to God, He will allow you and guide you and strengthen you through His Spirit to walk in the way of the Ten Commandments. So be sure you do understand that. Let's understand also Revelation 14 and verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Where are the true saints of God? Here they are. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. They walk in that way of life. God wants to place within you and me His holy, righteous character. He wants us to become like He is, so we're fit to rule with Christ over this earth. Will you fully surrender to Jesus Christ to live His life in you, or will you go along with the crowd? Will you follow the Antichrist? Will you come to His end? Again, make that most important decision by calling now. Request your free copy of our vital booklet on the Antichrist. Just ask for the booklet on the Antichrist. And tune in every week to Tomorrow's World program. Each week, Richard Ames and I will give you the meaning behind today's news and the meaning of life itself. See you right here next week. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304, San Diego, California, 92150. We invite you to visit our webpage at tomorrowsworld.org. The preceding program was produced by the Living Church of God.